The featured presentation is brought to you by Landman Productions. Landman Productions provides videography, photo montages, editing, instructional videos, and entertainment for all occasions. We're We're Ruster from Cincinnati, Ohio. You're You're watching watching the the Chuck Chuck Land Show. Yeah! That's all! My name is Chuck Land, and I've lived in many worlds, being a musician, veteran, animal lover, family man, videographer, and documentarian. Since 2005, my crew and I have documented over 17,000 hours of interesting people and places. I love what I do because you just never know what you're going to document and learn from each experience. And just maybe I can contribute to making the world a better place through my efforts. Hello and thanks for tuning in to the Chuck Land Show. I am your host, Chuck Land Jr. Today's segment is going to talk about Mr. Phil Blank. Phil was a Cincinnati blues icon that made his mark in the city. He's played with all kinds of famous people and he also had his own solo project for many years, the Phil Blank Band. Phil was a recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award given by the Cincinnati Blues Society. Unfortunately, Mr. Phil Blank passed away two months prior to the showing of this episode. So sit back and relax as I tell you the story of Mr. Phil Blank. The city of Deer Park is a one mile square community, 14 miles north of Cincinnati. I lived there from 1979 until 1997 and I was always amazed by the amount of talented people that lived in the community. So what better way to honor some of those people than to do a documentary on them? Of course there are many people that would like to honor in a segment but can't due to time restraints. But I am going to tell you a story about a few particular musicians that grew up in Deer Park and inspire more people than they can ever imagine. When I, when I first met Phil, it was eighth grade, um, new kid in school. He had moved from somewhere. Um, first time I saw him play guitar, he was in a, a rival band, and I thought it was, it was real good. You know, we were only like 13 or maybe 14 at the time, 13. Um, he had the white Gibson double cutaway. And I liked the guitar, of course, um, but he was pretty good. He was uh, very traditional, and, but he didn't just reproduce the music. Um, he made it his own, and he also was just very tasteful in what he played. I recognized his talent then, you know, a lot of talent, even back then. He was um, very dedicated as a musician. He was. You know, I remember him telling me that's what he wanted to, to be, you know, he was happy doing that, and, uh, and I knew he was into the blues. It would not be long before Phil would be jamming with many great players, including internationally famous blues musician T-Bone Walker. Even though he only jammed with T-Bone Walker one time, it reassured Phil that playing the blues was his destiny. First time I ever played professionally with him was on the stage at Crawford Auditorium in uh, Deer Park, Ohio. What took place in that auditorium was Parker's, one of the longest running high school variety shows in Cincinnati. With Deer Park being a great little community, it only made sense for Phil's family to settle there. I often call Deer Park the musical little city because all of the talented musicians that grew up there It was at this house on Queens Avenue where Phil resided at. It didn't take long before Phil was playing with bands that were based out of Deer Park. We did some pretty good gigs, dances, you know, big venue type things as the blues method, doing a blues based stuff. Um, The cream were popular at the time, so something along the lines of blues wasn't that far off. A few blocks away on Shank Avenue, A gentleman by the name of Tony Perry lived in this house. Phil, Tom, Michael, and many other musicians often jammed here. It was really good. Tony Perry playing harmonica, which I knew Tony as an artist, painter, artist, but I didn't know he was that good a harmonica player. Just 
astounded me. Um, Phil was playing guitar, the white Gibson. Um, Ken Stahl was playing bass and guitar. Then we brought on a bass player and that didn't work out, so Ken was basically the bass player uh, for that. That evolved into other musicians and uh, that's the beginnings of Slamhammer. We'd uh, always kind of meet up at parties. There'd be parties around town back then where we'd have jam sessions out. We jammed into the wee hours of the morning and uh, it was all blues and it was, it kind of struck me how, how cohesive and easy it all came together. You know, it was almost too easy, you know, it's like, uh, but it worked and people loved it. And, and uh, it seems like from there, that's, uh, that's where I was asked to join the band. Eventually, Tom was persuaded to move to Florida to play in a southern rock band. He received some bad news about his friend Tony Perry. And I got a letter in the mail saying, uh, from a friend of mine saying that Tony had passed away, wrecked on his motorcycle. And uh, I just realized that was, a, that was something that was totally unexpected, you know. About six months after Tony's death, Tom moved back to his home state of Ohio. Bill Blank, Michael Chapman, and another Deer Parker named Tom Rush had formed the Borstall Band. The trouble with the drummer we had, he just wasn't keeping up with the kind of music we wanted to play and didn't really like the kind of music we played, which was always gravitating back to the blues, of course. And uh, so we got Michael. Michael Chapman is one of Cincinnati's greatest drummers, not to mention one of the most entertaining drummers. He had so much energy to whatever group he happens to be playing with. He's been a, a, a big mainstay in, in uh, Deer Park music. Besides playing in Slam Hammer, he also played with Cincinnati icon Gradual Taylor for a few years and played on Gradual's hit, Shake That Heine. Sugar Heine. Ohio from a few mile radius town called Deer Park and a lot of great musicians came out of there. Uh, my dad's a drummer, great drummer from uh, a band called Slam Hammer that I was around as a little baby. I'd take uh, naps in my dad's bass drums, that's where the pillows were, but um, I was around their rehearsals and their gigs. Eventually Tom Rush left the band and was replaced by Alan Van Buskirk. We started calling it Slam Hammer again. And uh, that, that was, it was that period that I realized how serious uh, Phil was about playing harmonica. Phil was influenced by harp players such as Sonny Boy Williamson, Rice Miller, Paul Butterfield, Little Walter, Junior Wells, and former Deer Parker Tony Perry. I think Tony might have been the biggest influence because they were the ones that were able to sit down together and trade these licks and, and, and Tony was really kind of an expert at the time you know, before he passed away and I, I, I don't know if Phil ever mentioned Tony being an influence on him or not but I, I witnessed it that it was definitely one of the, he kind of took over after Tony passed away and that's when he worked on, started working on his vocal stylings and you know since Tony was the lead singer it was just kind of Phil was elected to become the singer. You know, I never knew him to be that much of a singer before that but so it really surprised me how well he could sing, how well he had advanced on the harmonica in the time that I had left for Florida from you know being in Florida. We ended up getting Chuck on keyboards and uh, we had a couple other minor configurations there in the early years and um, the band just sort of took off. <laughs> it wouldn't be long before the band started playing some really cool shows, such as this concert in 1976 at Mayfest in Clifton. And they set us up at a stage, a, a truck, a flatbed truck they brought in, put it across Short Vine, that was our stage. 
And uh, it was right in front of Bogarts, basically. They had a standing gig, it seemed like, for, for a few years down at Bob's Lounge down in Oakley. I think it was on Brotherton Road, maybe. And we'd make an exodus down there, a lot of us, on Friday night about 11 o'clock to catch the last set. And they'd always finish with uh, some uh, Sonny Boy Williamson and, and especially Buddy Waters, long distance calling to the Slam Hammer went through a lot of phases. That band probably broke up three or four different times, got back together with the same frequency. And one of the times that the band was broken up, Tom was on the road with national touring artist Henry Lee Summers, which had a hit song, Wish I Had a Girl That Walked Like That. I talked to Henry Lee Summers and let him listen to the old Slam Hammer tapes. And he liked what he heard from Phil's guitar, so he wanted to know if, uh, if Phil wanted to join his band. It wouldn't be long before Phil met Mississippi legend Sam Myers. Sam played drums with the famous Elmore James from 1952 to 1963. By the time Phil met Sam, Sam already had the reputation as an excellent songwriter, trumpet player, drummer, harmonica player, and singer. And uh, he just wailed on the harmonica and vocals. And like, this guy's authentic. This is for real. And. Uh, Actually, with Phil being the purest that he is in the blues, we, uh, he wasn't having a real good time with Henry. Henry's band was more of a, uh, a pop rock band. The next thing you know, Sam Myers asked Phil to play guitar in his band around Jackson, Mississippi. That's, about how, that's how Phil got to know Sam Myers, though. So, and then he started playing in his group in some of the local bars down around Jackson. After a while, Phil and Tom moved back to Cincinnati, Ohio. When we got back here, we decided we were going to put Slam Hammer together again, which we did for the fourth or fifth time. Eventually, the band started opening up for national touring artists such as Johnny Winters, Lonnie Mack, Roy Buchanan, and many others. I first saw Phil Blank through my camera lens, March 1985. He was with Slamhammer in the opening act of Bogarts. I heard that harmonica and I thought, what an amazing talent. He introduced himself to me saying he was interested in the photos I had taken. He got his photos and he got the photographer. August 30th, 1985, we were married on the Blues Cruise. The moon was full, the band was Slamhammer. It was a glorious night. Slam Hammer broke up for the final time that year. I suggested to Phil he put his own band together. From that moment on, I became not only his wife, but photographer, manager, confidant, partner in crime, and his behind the scene driving force. Phil was a joy to work with back then. The energy and love he had for the blues was nonstop. Throughout the next 24 years, Phil did his own thing and had many great players such as Bill Bartlett, Ricky Layton, and many other good musicians played with Phil. Most people that ever saw Phil play or actually knew him would probably agree that he definitely left his mark in the city of Cincinnati, which is why he was awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award by the Cincy Blues Society. And the reason that he was given that award, um, just his long history, he was one of the earliest bands earliest white bands 
um, playing authentic blues down at Corey's. And he's just been at it a long time. Um, and then, you know, I got to learn more about his history, um, traveling to Mississippi, playing with Sam Myers, traveling to California, playing with Hollywood Fats and the, a lot of the West Coast swing people. William Clark. You know, it's just it adds up to a very impressive uh, lifetime uh, achievement in music. And so I, you know, helped being part of the Blue Society, the board at that time, I helped uh, get him nominated for that. And that's the board agreed. And he received that award in 2004. And I believe he cherished that very much. On June 24th in 2007, I promoted a show at the Play-By-Play -play Cafe. Phil Blank was one of the bands that performed at this show. Show your love for the Phil Blank Blues Band, guys. On January 15, 2010, Mr. Phil Blank passed away. Uh, Phil Blank played with his blues band here back when Allen's was just opening up. There was only a handful of blues bars here in town. And uh, I mean, they'd have a great, great crowd. He was a terrific blues player, I can recall. and. Uh, um, we just had a lot of fun back in the day. Hi, my name's Bam Powell. I just heard the news about Phil Blank, and sorry to hear it. Uh, he was one of those uh, musicians. He was just always active and always, always had a good band, and it was uh, always a little different. And so happy that uh, he got to be a musician all his life. And you know, I'm sure he had a good life. And I'm sorry it's over, but. He might be starting a new life, and I hope so. So, it's about all I got to say. All Good right. luck, Phil. I didn't know Philip real well. We would always meet, cross in bars, and I was always really impressed with just what a nice guy he was. A great guitar player, great singer, great harp player, and the bands he had were always um, very true. And very real, you know. No, what would you say, false pretenses or trying to create some false image. It was really actually what Phil always was. We're all we're, we're all gonna miss Phil. Phil was a, a special special person, a special musician. We're all gonna miss him. Phil was born to play the blues. Phil was the quintessential bluesman. The blues was his life, heart, and soul. He was always true to his music. He never compromised. He was a blues purist and a perfectionist and a talented musician. He was an artist. I am proud to have been a part of the great bluesman Phil became. I know he's in blues heaven, jamming with the blues greats that came before him. And he definitely has his mojo working.